to have a lead crisis. Uh, this next guest has written a new book, and she was in town last week. Dr. Mona Hanna Atisha, welcome to the Big 550 KTRS here in St. Louis. It is great to be with you. How was your book signing last night? It was awesome. Despite the uh, tornado warnings and the thunderstorm warnings, we had a great crowd. The book is called What the Eyes Don't See, a story of crisis, resistance, and hope in an American city, what the eyes don't see. First, uh, doctor, let's talk about Flint today. Uh, how bad is the situation? Has it been fixed? And is everything put, put back together again? It's almost there. We uh, have dramatically improved our water quality, and we are in the process of replacing our damaged lead pipes. And that's great news. There's only two other cities in this country that have replaced their lead pipes. Uh, but until those pipes are replaced, the people of Flint still need to be on filtered or bottled water. And then in terms of the children, which is where I spend my time, we are doing incredible, amazing, um, hopeful things. And that's very much what this book hopes to share is the terrible lessons of Flint, but also the role of activism, resistance, and recovery. Uh, how bad is it? How much lead got into the kids and how much lead got into the people's human systems? Yeah, so for 18 months, we were on untreated corrosive water that ate up our plumbing, that put lead into our drinking water, and uh, lead into the bodies of our children. Um, so we don't know how bad it will be, but we're not waiting to find out. Um, in Flint, we have built some really proactive and positive programming to not see the consequences of this devastating exposure to a mm. neurotoxin. Um, can children be permanently damaged by too much lead? Yeah, so lead is a irreversible neurotoxin. It impacts children's cognition, how they think, their IQ levels. It impacts their behavior. Um, it alters, it can alter a child's entire life course trajectory. We now know through incredible science that there is no safe level of lead exposure um, and that we are supposed to prevent any kind of lead exposure. And this lead crisis in Flint is is similar to, to lead exposure that's happening here in St. Louis and in Detroit and Philadelphia. We still, to this day, have kids who are unnecessarily exposed to lead from paint and soil and dust and also from water. Uh, what about adults? They're affected by lead too, aren't they? Yeah, lead impacts every age group and almost every or organ system. In adults, it's been associated with early dementia and high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, gout. Um, it impacts everybody, but we worry about the kids the most because of, of its impact on their neurodevelopment. That's just when their brains are developing. The book is called What the Eyes Don't See. Uh, doctor, uh, how much of the book is medical? How much of the book goes into how it got to be, the mistakes that were made? How much, I guess, is the book medical versus, versus political? Yeah, so um, Oprah called this book, and she, Oprah put it on her summer reading list, and she called it a Grissom-like page turner. So there's a lot of the fast-paced action that went into uncovering the Flint water crisis. But the book is a mix and weaves and interconnects so many other issues from the politics to the demographics, to the history, to science, to medicine. Um, and it also weaves in, um, it's a memoir. It weaves, weaves in information about me and my family history. I'm an immigrant, came to this country when I was four. Um, so the book is written for, for the lay audience. And it, it's easy to read. It, it's quick, has a lot of action, but also um, hopefully will open people's eyes. I guess that's the title. Um, it hopefully will be an eye-opener for folks all over um, to recognize injustices that are happening in their communities and to be able to kind of step up and take action and improve um, the situations of especially children in their communities. I don't know if this question is even possible to answer, but Flint, Michigan is a working class minority community. If, right. if the same thing would have been proposed in Ladue, in the richest zip code in America, would it have happened in Ladue? And if it did happen, would uh, the response been different? Absolutely would not have happened, and that's been clearly stated in many reports. This was a case of environmental injustice where the demographics of the population, the race and the class, um, created and perpetuated this crisis. It would not have happened in a richer or a wider community. Would it have been cleaned up faster if it was in a better Yeah, community? it would have been cleaned up faster, but it never would have happened. It yeah. wouldn't have happened in the first place. Um, Flint had lost democracy. We, the state had 
taken over the city. We were under emergency management. There was no accountability. Um, and all these, this move was made because of austerity to save money with no regard um, for public health. Uh, and the people, the heroic people of Flint were raising their voices, but, but they were being dismissed and denied. Was there anybody in government saying, hey, if you do this, you will, will, there's going to be a lead problem? Did anybody ring the yeah, bell there, beforehand? There were. There were uh, not beforehand that I know of, but um, the, you know, the Flint water operator said, we're not ready to use this water, but they went ahead and did it anyways. Um, but there are a lot of amazing folks in government at the state level and especially at the EPA who said, you know, this is wrong. You know, there, there's something wrong here. They were whistleblowers, um, but they were also silenced throughout the story. Mona, Dr. Mona, Hannah, Atisha. The book is called What the Eyes Don't See, a story of crisis, resistance and hope in an American city. Doctor, thanks for your time. Good luck and safe travels. Thank you.